Hello, everyone. Tamara here. Good to see you all for another burst of innovation, another innovation lens to help us kick off the week so that you can work smarter, not harder, perform at your peak, and hopefully influence others to come along for the change journey that we really all need to be on right now. So today, the thing that I want to cover is change. And not in the grand scale of change, we can cover that another time because it is important, but actually it's something that I think is equally important, if not more important. I want to take change down to the personal level. And it started because, let me show you this, I got this text. Hold on. Let me pull it up. Now, the thing I'm showing this, I'm going to hide the person's name because that doesn't matter. But I got this text and this text text made me realize that we really need to have a conversation around how to get people on board for change and why your teams actually resist change. Now, before I dig in, I see you guys joining. Thank you. Good to see you. This is a 10 minute burst of innovation. If you've been here before, you know the drill. I should say 10 ish minute burst of innovation. If you haven't been here before, welcome. This is all about giving you the innovation tool, strategy, and mindset you need to move forward. It's about keeping innovation top of mind, just getting a sprinkle of innovation. I think oftentimes the reason we don't innovate, the reason those efforts fail is because we do this launch and abandon and then we kind of disappear with it, right? We got to keep innovation top of mind. Innovation really isn't a point in time exercise. It's a mindset and a way of thinking and a way of doing, taking action. So that's why these bursts are the way they are. So for those of you who are new, that's why. Welcome. The comment section in Facebook is where you can put questions, insights, ideas. Here's the thing I want you to consider. And I've said this, if you've been with me before, you've heard me say it. And I just, it's so important. I'll keep repeating it. If you have a question ask it because somebody else also has that question and you asking that helps us all. Or maybe they didn't even realize they had that question and then you asked it and they went, oh yeah, that is a problem I'm dealing with. So ask away. And this is about bringing up my best and what I know, but this is also about your brilliance and your innovative mind. So if you have an insight or an idea or a piece of advice that you want to share, put it in the comment section. We are so, as one of my clients has said to me, she, in fact, funny enough, I just emailed her. She said this to me in March when we started on this roller coaster journey. We are in this, we are stronger together. So your comments are as important as my comments. Your advice is as valuable, if not more valuable at times than mine. We all have incredible experience that we bring to the table. So let's not lose sight of that. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I want to talk about change. I want to talk about why your team resists change even when they know they should. And as I said in the beginning, as you were coming on, I want to change in the grand scale is important to talk about change management. Actually, I don't like change management to me. It's project based, but that's a different conversation. I don't want to talk about it just in the grand scale. I actually want to bring it down to a very personal level of why the people you're dealing with seem resistant to change. And I want to show you this text. As I said, I'm going to hide their name because that's not relevant. Um, but I got this text from them in all caps and it says, it's not that I don't agree with the direction. This, this was about a whole a pivot that the company needed, the team needed to do to keep up with the changing times of when. So here, I'm going to let you read this actually. Like I said, I want to cover their names because that's not relevant. I don't know if you can see that. So it's not that I don't agree with the direction. It's that I'm not on board to actually do it. Do you see how that's all caps so? Oh, it reflects in there. That's one of my favorite things about it. This is what the person said to me. It's not that I don't agree with the direction. It's that I'm not on board to actually do it. That to me is a great example of people's personal resistance to change. It's not that we don't see it happening. It's not even that we're necessarily in denial about it. So here's the thing. I want to talk. I want to give you four reasons why people resist change. And then I want to give you three very simple things that you can do as a leader in your organization, regardless of your title, that will actually help get people over this hurdle. And there's an overarching statement that I want you to remember in all of this, because we talk a lot about change and say people resist change, people resist change, people fear change. That's actually not accurate. Here's what's accurate. People don't fear change. They fear being changed. Let me say that again. I think it's so important. 
people don't fear change. People fear being changed. Do you see the distinction in that? People don't fear change itself. We change all the time. We change directions. We change jobs. We learn new skills. We have difficult conversations with people that lead to differences in opinions and change. We change all the time. But as humans, what we do truly fear is being changed, us as individuals being changed. And all this swirling around us of change that's happening is happening to us. And part of the reason your team may be resisting on an individual level that turns into a collective level, part of the reason they're resisting is because they're fearing being changed. So let me let me break that down and show you. I even wrote these on sticky notes so that I could show them to you. So the first one is the way this shows up is people fear change, right? Because it's happening to us. It's not us in control. It's not us. We're not, we are not the ones you know, deciding what happens with COVID and the election. And oh my, I mean, the list goes on, right? Social change, all political change, all of it. It's happening to us. And the problem is, and let's take that to a company level, when that marketplace changes and the customer demands change and needs change and your demands change and your boss's demands change of you, that's happening to you. That's happening to your team. And when that happens, you also don't feel valued. So that's another problem that comes out of it. So that's the first thing. The second one is, and this is no surprise. I mean, let me just ask you before I say this, put this in the comment section, if this has ever been you, what I'm about to say, because I know it has been me on a small and a big level. People fear whoop, the unknown. And what that actually translates into is a fear of not knowing what to do, being left behind, just total uncertainty. Tell me if that's ever been you. I'll tell you whether that is not knowing where I'm going. I just took a new route to get somewhere and was all panicked because I was like, I don't know if I'm taking the right turn. I don't know if I'm going in the right direction. Like I was so afraid of getting it wrong. I put left behind, but I think it's also getting it wrong. I was so afraid of getting it wrong that I was panicked. In the meantime, the GPS got me there. I even had a guide and I still was panicked, right? That's on a small level. And I think on a grand level, this this disruption that we're all facing has created new challenges and new opportunities. We've talked about that before, but that means we have to create new solutions, new innovation, new thinking to solve these challenges and to go after these opportunities. So our fear of being wrong is actually totally dialed up. Okay. Tell me if that's you. Cannot be alone in this. All right. The four, third one is, and this is no, you know, I love that lizard brain. Mine's Bernard. The lizard brain sees oops, I'm there. the lizard brain sees kind of change as unsafe and risky. So your lizard brain's over there wanting to keep you safe, wanting to keep you comfortable. So anything that's changed, even like this text to me was a great example of that because even though they agree the change has had to happen, they still didn't do it. They still didn't want to do it because their lizard brain's going, it's too risky. It's too unsafe. Don't do it. Hold on. What did it say? Yes. Yes, changing sectors in the organization. Yes, right? So that's like, well, what does that mean? Well, what if I get it wrong? Well, what if I don't know what I'm doing? What if I get left behind? Thank you for sharing that. I totally get it. Okay, the fourth one is, and this is the big one, and goes back to my overarching statement and the three things I want to give you to actually help your team overcome their fear of change. This is a big one. People fear, the reason we fear change, the reason we resist it, is because we are afraid of it changing who I am, not what, but who. So not just my job title, my skills, not just that, but me as a person. We take it personally. So new, new world requires new thinking and new skills. But the fear that comes out of that is your I there's a fear that I'm going to be changed. Now, I know what some of you logical think, thinkers are out there going, well, tomorrow, yeah, but change is happening and we have to deal with it. Yes, I could not agree more. But the flip side to that is the frustration that comes along when you or your teams won't change. And the reason for that are the four things I just talked about, right? It's happening to us. We have no control over it. We have this fear of, of being left behind, of the unknown, of being wrong. Um, our lizard brain sees it as unsafe and risky and holds us back. And we're afraid it's going to change who I am. So 
for you leaders out there, I want to give you three very, very simple ways to actually help people overcome it. Because again, remember, this is not actually a fear of change. This is a fear of being changed. So we're going to get them on board with change. And we're going to minimize the fear of being changed because that's actually where the resistance comes from. They're not actually the same thing. Okay. So the first one is, I'm going to write these down too. Oops. Okay. Number one is find ways to give control back to the people around you. And it could be really small things. I'm going to share a personal example and a business example. So on the personal side, right? So my kids have no say in dinner and food and like all that, right? Because I deal with all that. But I try to give them a little bit of control so that they feel more part of the process. So I'll say to them, hey, um, I'm going to go to the grocery store. Do you want me to get hamburgers or pizza for dinner? So I'm not changing I'm not changing the full outcome, but I'm giving them enough control to feel a part of the decision and a part of the conversation at work when I'm with my team and I've decided we are going to, we're going to take a different direction in something instead of saying to them, here's what we're doing. Now you do your part. I'll say, here's what we're doing. And Oh, in this 10%, what would you do? How would you add to it? What do you think? So give them some control and some of that control is allowing them to make some decisions and sometimes those decisions are big sometimes they're small but giving control is key okay number two okay number two is invest in them all right tomorrow what do you mean by that so i'm going to tell you what another client told me we were doing a workshop with them where they also got access to all these tools and he said to me the reason this worked, the reason my team bought, so let me back up. He had to get them to agree to some major changes that had to happen. And this was stuff coming down from high up in the C-suite that he had to get them to buy into because they're the ones doing the work. And what's smart about this client is he realized, hey, if I just go to them and say, look, here's the, here's the landscape, here's the changes, go do it. He said, they'll mentally agree, but they're not going to actually be on board and they're not going to do it to their best. Kind of like that text I was showing you, right? They'll mentally, like intellectually, they'll get it, but they're not going to do it. So here's what he told me. He said, Tamara, I think the reason this meeting that we had went so well, he said, is because we actually invested in them and gave them some resources first to dial up innovation. So we gave them the IQE assessment. We gave them access to a, it's like this private um, everyday innovators tribe is the best way to describe it. It's a membership platform. So all the tools. Um, and this happened in a different way for with them for a million reasons. But anyways, that's not the point. <laughs> the point is we gave them tools. We invested. He invested in them. He gave them all the IQE so they understood how they innovated. Like you put all that together. He said, because I invested in them, they felt invested in themselves and they felt invested in a change. And I think that's where both giving control and investing in them makes a huge difference is they're then invested in the change and what has to happen next. Okay. Number three is, oops, let me write it. Number three is acknowledge all effort. Now I put all in here specifically because it's not just about acknowledging the good. It's not just about acknowledging the successful. It's not just about acknowledging the ones that say the things that you want them to say. It's about acknowledging all the effort that people are put in. Now, I'm not saying effort is everything. So sometimes that effort leads to failed effort, failed results. But what I am saying is when your people are trying to open up to change, when they are pushing aside their fear, it is important to validate that and recognize it. We all want to feel valued for the contributions. And as you'll recall from kind of this, right, if they are afraid and that things are risky, if they're afraid of being wrong, if they have a fear of the unknown, acknowledging through the process of change is important. Now, this doesn't mean uh, validating the narrative that, oh, it's so hard all the time. Oh my gosh, it's so much work. I don't mean that because that is actually a spiral downward. It is really about acknowledging the energy and the investment and recognizing your people. I think in times of massive change like we're in, we need to do that a little bit more 
to keep people focused and productive and on point. We've got a million distractions happening in our lives right now. So, okay. So here's my question to you. I want to know in the comments, which speaks to you and your team. And maybe it's all three and that's great. All three of them really do work together. But are you going to think about how to give control to people on your team? Are you going to find ways to invest in them? Are you going to acknowledge all the effort? Which one of those? And as you're writing that in the chat bar, let me just write something down here. You write that in the comments while I write this. Okay. So we're going to get out of this myth that people fear change. That's not what they fear. People fear being changed. So we're going to take that being out of it so that we're just dealing with the change. And we're going to do that by giving people a sense of control, small or big, depending on what you're working on. We're going to invest in them, sign them up for the Everyday Innovators Tribe, like give them the tools they need to make the change. Your people need to feel just as empowered as you do moving forward. And then acknowledge all the effort. That effort matters. It matters now more than ever. And if you want, I always say reward behaviors, not outcomes. If you want them to be more innovative and to really be on board with change, actually reward them for doing that. And that reward, that reward can be as simple as acknowledgement. Yes. In, um, well, let me put this up. Invest in them. Yeah. Love it. Good. Good. It's, you know, it is so interesting. It is, it's the simple law of empowerment, I guess. I don't know if this is actually law, so let's just make it up for now. And that is that when, when people feel empowered, people will take action. And there's really two sides to empowerment. And one of them we do well, and one of them we don't do as well. So I think empowerment has two sides. Side one is making people feel like they can do it, right? That's kind of that more mindset. But we don't want to send them off a cliff of like, woo, I can do it. And then give them no wings to fly. And to me, the investment, the tools, the resources, that's the wings to fly. I'm gonna write, I'm gonna put that into a post. See, you guys, you guys motivate me. Oh my gosh, yes. Oh good, you're gonna invest in them too. Yeah, I love okay, I love all this investing. Yes, I will tell you when my team, first of all, all my team has access to the everyday innovators tribe stuff, obviously. I would be silly not to give my own team the tools that I know work for you. But secondly, when they come to me and say, Tamar, I really want to learn this or I want to figure this out, I am almost always a yes. There's got to be a pretty hard reason for me to say no, because I know investing in them empowers them to bring their A game back to me it makes, and it makes them stronger humans in life overall. And I want that for them and I want it for us as a team. Okay, so just to summarize as we close out, the four reasons, so first of all, people don't fear change, they fear being changed. So we're gonna take the being out of it. Second, the four reasons is it's happening to us. We fear that unknown, we fear being wrong, fear of uncertainty. The lizard brain sees change is unsafe and wants to keep us safe. And people are afraid that you're not gonna change what, but the who, who I am. And then the three things you can do is give control, invest in them, and acknowledge all the effort. Yes, I believe that investing in them and acknowledging all the effort would be important for buy-in to change. Yeah, it really, it makes a huge difference. It, it is, I think, I think accidentally one of the keys to our work at Launch Street and all the human-centered innovation we do is the reason I think our, um, not just our everyday innovators try, but we call them V sessions. They're online, they're, think of it as a workshop. You bring the challenge, right, and the team, and we bring the facilitation. But I think part of the, the accidental reason we get more traction than other people that do this is because we first invest in them and we first give them some control before we even get to the meeting. So, and then we acknowledge in the meeting that those three things are the secret sauce, I think, for getting to success. Because how many of us have been in a meeting where we're talking about new ideas and whether this related to change or not, but we're talking about new ideas and the team's like this, right? You can't see me, it's too late. Like they're like this, right? And they're like that because even though they might agree, um, they're still fearing that change. So here's the question. How do we prepare them before we give them control? Uh, well, I need to know a little bit more specifics about your situation, but let me, let me talk about it high level. So I think a couple things. So I think you'd be amazed at how many people want control, but we're so used to not getting it that we've stopped asking for it. And I think your team 
your not you specifically, but in general, teams really do fall into this bucket. I would start small with little things and I would work my way up bigger and bigger. So I wouldn't go from if my team is not used to having control of any way and now suddenly they have control. What happens in those situations? People don't, you know, they don't know what to do. Right. People just kind of freeze up and then we go, God, I'm giving them control. I'm letting them make decisions. So I would start small and I would work my way up. I don't think control, whether that's in decisions, accountability, I don't think that's something you can hypothetically talk about and then really do. You might talk about it once. You might set the stage that way, but I think small things work your way up to it. I think you can set expectations and say, hey, listen, we're going through massive change. And one of the things that I need is for all of us to bring our A game to the table. This only works if you, all this incredible people that are on my team, you bring it and we bring our, we bring the best in ourselves and those around us. And I need all of us to do that. So I'm going to ask you to, I am going to ask more of you than I have in the past. Um, you know, I use this analogy of it's like the fourth quarter in football when your team is down by two touchdowns and right. The coach doesn't pull you aside and go, it's all good. Just get a field goal. It's like, whatever they're winning right No, you, you, the coach rallies them and says, I'm going to ask more of you than I ever have because I believe you can do it. So I guess actually that would be my first, my first, answer to your question is I would, I would play that fourth quarter coach. And then I would start giving them little by little by little until you get to the place that you really want them to be. Um, I have a colleague who owns a bank and after going to Disney, he recognized that Disney employees have incredible, they have incredible accountability to make decisions at the frontline level. And he didn't have that at his bank. So he went and brought it back to his bank and said, any decision under $500, I'm making the number up. I can't remember what it was you get to, you get to have control over, like you get to make the decision. And the tellers at the bank for the first couple of weeks still asked him on $10 decisions because he went from no control to a decent amount of control. So then he had to really back it up and go and have them together and say, Hey, how would you deal with this? Hey, in this situation, I'm giving you control. And then that, and then he worked his way back up to 500, but they needed some warm up. They needed some practice. Okay. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, it was a little bit all over the place, but there were a lot of good nuggets in here. Thank you. Thank you. Final reminder, reminder, people don't fear change. They fear being changed. Take the being out of it. All right, everyone. Good to see you all next time. Tomorrow out.